This is the Xtool F1 Ultra. It combines the best of both diode and fiber lasers. Over the past month, I've spent hours with this laser and I'll show you the things I learned that you should consider before you decide to get this. I'll show you what I discovered under its hood and how it stacks up against regular fiber and diode lasers. Also, stick around to see the tests and comparisons. Welcome to Melopine Lasers. Before we start, the F1 Ultra was sent to us by Xtool for testing, but this is not a sponsored video and I have included my honest opinions as much as I can. The F1 Ultra looks exactly like an enlarged F1, but this is an entirely different machine. The F1 has a 10 watt diode and a 2 watt infrared laser, whereas the Ultra has a 20 watt diode and a 20 watt fiber laser. If you look at the size side of things, it kinda looks like a coffee maker and weighs around 32 pounds. With this, you get a work area of around 8.5 inches by 8.5 inches, which is on the higher end when you compare it with other Galvo fiber lasers. You also have a vertical clearance of around 8.5 inches, but the maximum height the lens can focus on is around 6 inches. The shield that covers the front and sides block the scattered laser just like on the F1, but this time around there is no switch to disable the laser when it's open. So you can leave it half open to get easy access. This might not be good with respect to safety, but I prefer it this way. When you want to do repeat jobs, you can leave the shield open and quickly swap work pieces. The chassis is all metal and sturdy and the plastics have a good fit and finish. The base plate is all metal, however, you cannot remove the base plate like you could on the F1 for handheld engraving. Even if it had a removable base plate, the machine is quite heavy. On this side, you have the big red e-stop, the ports for connecting the accessories, thumb drive and to the PC. On the rear, you have more ports. This one is for the fire safety kit from Xtool. Then you have more ports for accessories like foot pedal, USB safety key and the display port. Which brings us to the display. You get a controller with a display. You can move the head up or down with these buttons. And if you have any job loaded onto the controller, you can run framing with this button and start the job from the controller itself. You don't need to run back to your computer each time. You also get this foot pedal and a button that you can use to run repeat jobs. You just fix this L-shaped jig on the work area, load your workpiece and press the pedal. Swap the workpiece, repeat. Coming to the laser side of things, you have two types of laser here and both are 20 watt ones. The fiber source is placed on the back and the diode source is on the top. The laser beam from the source comes into the galvo head which is a clever little setup. Inside the galvo head, there are two mirrors attached to motors. These motors adjust the angles of the mirrors and even a slight change in the mirror's angle can result in a significant movement of the laser beam. This precise control is what makes galvo style lasers so fast. If you look at the diode laser, it's a 20 watt unit. You can use this for engraving and cutting on materials like wood, leather, paper, some acrylic, fabric and glass. The other is a 20 watt fiber laser. Now, I had my doubts. I thought Xtool had stacked up infrared diodes to get the 20 watt power. So I opened up the machine and inside you have a 20 watt fiber laser unit from Breakers Lasers, which is a popular fiber laser source manufacturer. The fiber laser is mostly for metals and for plastics. Another cool thing you can do with the fiber laser is 3D engraving, which is also called embossing on metals and slate. Here you remove material layer by layer to create a 3D pattern. It's kind of like the opposite of 3D printing where you add material layer by layer. If you want to learn how to do this, I would be making a tutorial video soon, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Before we jump into the features, let's take a look at some of the tests I did.
If you look at the cutting performance, I assumed it would be poor since there is no air assist in this thing, but I got a better result than what I had expected. I was able to cut 5mm pine with ease. The maximum cut depth I got is about 9mm on pine wood. But yes, cutting with an air assist is a different thing. If your thickness is under 3mm, there is negligible difference between a diode and the F1 Ultra. I even made this stuff where I engraved the image using the fiber and used the diode to cut out the shape. This is 2mm black acrylic and the cut is quite good. I also drew some concentric circles to check the accuracy. Each circle is 20mm larger and it did hold a good amount of accuracy after proper calibration. However, there is one little problem when it comes to cutting. You see, the beam is reflected off of a mirror placed inside the head, which means you get a perfectly vertical beam at the center and near the edges the beam has a certain angle with the work surface. So if you were to cut a large design where the laser needs to cut along the edges of its work area, you'll get an angled cut as you can see here. This is the case with all Galvo base setup. But for thin materials, this is totally negligible. Coming to the engraving side of things, the level of detail you can get is incredible. This is a metal card I did at 846 dpi, which is way too much and it takes quite a bit of time. The maximum you would ever need is about 500 dpi. The spot size for the infrared laser is 0.03 by 0.03 millimeter, which is great, and for the blue diode, it is 0.08 by 0.1 mm, which is not so great. The spot size on the 20 watt X Tool S1 is smaller at 0.08 by 0.06 mm. Now, before we move on, I'd like to tell you about my free newsletter that I send every week. It's like a weekly magazine full of laser stuff. Lessons, tips, videos, offers, you get the idea. It's a quick and easy way to get better at lasers. I also have a paid masterclass for Lightburn where you can connect with me live to help you with lasers. If you are interested, the links are in the description. The F1 Ultra is a feature packed laser. You get a maximum speed of 10,000 mm per second which is way faster than your typical diode lasers that max out at about 400 mm per second. The framing speed is 24,000 mm per second with which you can get a live preview of your design for accurate positioning of your workpiece. The biggest feature on the F1 Ultra is perhaps the camera. You have a camera facing the work area that you can use to capture an image of your workpiece and then modify your design to fit on it. The camera can also measure the height of the workpiece pretty accurately for autofocus. If you want to manually focus the laser, you can use the up down button on the controller till the blue and red dots overlap on the workpiece. There is another cool thing here, when you move the laser up or down, the controller on the machine sends the measurement back to XCS and you can see the height the laser is focused at. The software then uses this measurement to adjust the image from the camera to give you an accurate representation of the workpiece on screen. There is something else that you can do with the camera. Let's say you have multiple identical pieces that you want to engrave. You lay them out on the work area, use the camera to capture the image and then place the design on one of the work pieces and the software would adjust the design to fit all the other pieces. Even if the workpiece is rotated a full 180 degrees, XCS will rotate the design to align with the workpiece. This is quite an innovative feature that they have developed. But if you have the time, you can use a jig like this to engrave them one by one with perfect alignment. Now, the next big feature of the F1 Ultra is the conveyor feeder. The conveyor feeder is a separate purchase and costs about $500 on pre-order. The conveyor is for batch production like engraving keychains or business cards. You drop your blanks on one side and you collect the engraved pieces in a box on the other end, just like in a factory. The way the F1 Ultra does this is, you capture the image of one of your blanks and then place your design on it. There is a catch though. All of your blanks need to be identical. You can't have different types of blanks in here. Once you have the design aligned and ready on the first blank, you lay your workpiece on the conveyor and you'll get the engraved piece on the other end. The software would rotate the design to match the orientation of your workpiece. However, something that I found missing here is that there is no variable text or mail merge. Let's say you have a bulk order from a hotel to engrave some keychains. So the keychains will have the logo and different room numbers on each. 
you can't do that as of now it will be the same design on all of the pieces so i shot an email to xtool and they told me that they have already started working on bringing out variable text for batch processing so this feature will come out soon via a software update once you have that you would be able to engrave variable serial numbers or barcodes on your work pieces if you want to engrave on mugs tumblers or rings the F1 Ultra is also compatible with the RA2 Pro rotary or any rotary if you could find a way to connect it to the F1 Ultra. I also got the chance to test the air filter and it was way better than the air filter I was using till now. The capacity is quite good and it managed to remove all the odor when I was cutting acrylic. Apart from these, there are a couple of accessories you get with the machine. The first is the foot pedal for repeat jobs. Next you have a push button that serves the same purpose and then you have the display unit. The display unit is a nice touch from Xtool, you don't see this with traditional fiber lasers. You can load files onto a thumb drive and then frame and run jobs from the display itself, which means you don't need a computer always. The F1 Ultra does not pull back in terms of safety. There is a shield that you can pull down to cover the work area. However, there is no switch on the shield and if you raise the shield, the laser doesn't stop. This is because if there was a switch, it would have been difficult to do repeat jobs as you would need to open and close the shield each time a new piece is placed in. The F1 also has a good exhaust fan that removes the fumes from the work area if you keep the shield closed. You can connect a pipe to the exhaust port and vent it outside. The exhaust fan on the F1 Ultra is strong enough and you wouldn't need an additional fume extractor. You also get a USB safety key with the Ultra. If you remove this, the machine would be active but the lasers won't fire till you put it back. Apart from this, there is an e-stop and you also have a flame detector which stops the laser in case there is a flare-up. You can connect to the F1 Ultra via a USB cable or via Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is fast and is a more convenient option. On the software side, you have the new upgraded Xtool Creative Space which has quite a few cool features like AI designs and Xtool's project library to quickly get started. I really like how Xtool has integrated all of the F1 Ultra's capabilities with their software. The camera, the conveyor, the auto height measurement, everything feels seamless. If you are a Lightburn fan like me, the F1 Ultra is compatible with Lightburn but the full suite of features won't work with Lightburn, like the camera, the autofocus, the batch processing and the conveyor. Also, it's not so straightforward to use the Ultra with Lightburn, but Xtool has a really good guide on how to do it. On the F1 Ultra, you have the laser source and the head compactly placed in a single unit, which saves up some space. But there is a catch. Since the source and your Galvo are in the same unit, you cannot detach the head from the machine for portable engraving like you could with some other fiber lasers. Your workpiece needs to be placed within this work area. If you look at the work area, the F1 Ultra gives you a larger work area of 8.5 inches by 8.5 inches, which is double than what typical fiber lasers offer. When you compare the F1 Ultra with a regular fiber laser, the F1 Ultra is quite good in all aspects of engraving as far as 20 watt fibers go and the F1 Ultra has a lot of bells and whistles along with a diode laser, but it also costs a lot more. The biggest difference when you compare the F1 with a regular diode laser is the work area. A regular diode laser will give you a much larger work area because they have an open gantry arrangement and this one uses a galvo head. That brings us to the next major difference and that is the engraving speed. A typical diode will have a maximum speed of 400 mm per second but the F1 Ultra has a maximum speed of 10,000 mm per second, which is incredibly faster than any gantry style diode laser out there. That and the additional features plus the fiber laser option makes this quite a versatile laser. The Xtool F1 Ultra currently costs $4,000, which is their pre sales price. A regular 20 watt fiber laser will cost you around $1,600, and you can get a 20 watt diode laser for about $850. So if you were to get these separately, it would only cost about $2,500. But this would be without all the bells and whistles that the F1 Ultra offers. Also the blue diode on the F1 Ultra would be much faster if you are okay with the limited workspace. 
In conclusion, the X2 Lefman Ultra with its 20W diode and 20W fiber laser sources offer a blend of high performance and smart features. Compared to conventional fiber lasers, it stands out with additional capabilities like a camera, conveyor feeder and batch processing. While its work area is smaller than typical diode lasers, its speed is 25 times faster, significantly enhancing productivity. However, this advanced functionality comes at a higher price point of $4,000 compared to the combined cost of around $2,500 for separate 20W fiber and diode lasers. This price difference makes the F1 Ultra particularly suitable for businesses with high production demands where efficiency and speed are critical. The ability to use both types of laser in one machine saves valuable workspace and reduces the need for managing multiple devices. For businesses that produce large quantities of identical items, the F1 Ultra's high throughput capabilities can offset the initial investment by saving time and increasing output. Conversely, for those with lower production needs, the higher cost might not be as easily justified. This is a good laser to choose if you plan on taking it to craft shows or where you create customized products live. Ultimately, the decision comes down to your specific requirements. If the F1 Ultra's power, speed and advanced features align with your production goals and can significantly improve your workflow, it's a worthy investment. For those needing rapid high volume production with smart capabilities, the F1 Ultra is a good choice. If the F1 Ultra makes sense for you, you could use the link in my description to check it out. Usually, Xtool comes up with some sort of discount program and my link might have a discount for you. So that's it about the Xtool F1 Ultra. If you found the video helpful, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be waiting for you in the next one.